Hello and welcome to Novato Tuts Plus course. I'm Adi Pordila, and today you'll learn how to build an online clothing store using Shopify. Now, selling clothes online is a very profitable business, and you can do that very easily thanks to e-commerce platforms like Shopify. Uh, if you get the right theme and you configure your shop properly, you can get very close to running a, a successful online store. In this course, I'll be uh, taking you through all the necessary steps, like adding products, creating collections, installing a new theme, and configuring that theme to match your store branding. So if you're uh, ready to go, let's start by um, doing a little bit of planning before creating our store. That's coming up in the next lesson, so I'll see you there. Welcome to the first lesson of this course where we'll go over uh, the plan for our online store and see exactly what we need to create. Now, while this is a demo store that we'll be creating, um, we'll uh, be adding content that's very close to the real thing. So this exercise should give you a pretty good idea of, um, of the process behind launching a real store. With that said, let's begin. Now, I have a very simple document that's gonna outline the things that we need to create. So we're creating an online store for Urban Clothing, which is a brand new company that aims to sell high quality and affordable clothing. As you can see, we're selling clothing and accessories for women, men, and children. The website is urbanclothing.com. Uh, here we just have a little bit more information about the company, the address, a couple of testimonials, and then we can see what our homepage should feature. Uh, we can see that we just want a contact and an about page. Of course, apart from the usual pages in, a, in an e-commerce website like homepage, collection, product, cart, and so on, uh, these are the categories that we need to add. And these are the details we have to get started. On top of this, I also have a logo. This is the one that we'll be using. Well, I have a theme, uh, it's called Bix Bang. We'll, uh, we'll get to this in a future lesson. And I also have product images. Now the product images are split up in multiple folders. So we have one for accessories, and each product has its own folder where we can find images and also a short description. So the name, description, some other information about it, the variance of that product, and also the price. And you can see I have a file like this in every single directory, directory uh, for uh, every product. So by having these set up beforehand, we'll make our task of creating the store much, much easier. Now, before we get started, I would just like to make a quick mention. If you wanna learn the basics of creating a, a Shopify store, you can check out a course that I did earlier uh, this year. It's a free course on Envato Tuts Plus. It's called How to Build a Shopify Store. And this will uh, show you basically all the details of how to get started with this platform. This course is more specific because we're building a clothing store. So uh, there will be areas where I'll go more in depth than uh, this introductory course. So make sure to check this out first and then watch uh, the rest of this course. All right, so now that we have an idea of what we need to create, let's go ahead and do just that. Uh, we'll begin in the next um, lesson where we'll uh, create the actual store. So I'll see you there. 
Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we'll uh, create the online store using Shopify. So uh, let's begin. We'll go to shopify.com. And of course, if you already have an account, you would go ahead and log in. In my case, I'm going to click start free trial, or I can enter my email address here. And I can click this link. So let's go ahead and do that. Enter your email address, your uh, password, and your store name. So let's say urban clothing. That's already taken. Let's say urban clothing demo. That should be okay. So click create your store. Next, Shopify is gonna ask us uh, some questions like, uh, are you already selling? And we'll just say that I'm not selling products yet. That's uh, what uh, we're doing right now. Uh, do you have something to sell? I'm gonna select this third option. Uh, what is your current revenue? Let's say that I'm just getting started. And industry, let's select clothing. Are you setting up the store for a client? Uh, it really doesn't matter at this point. So we're gonna just hit next. Now let's add an address. Here you would obviously just um, enter your business address. In my case, I'm just gonna add some random uh, numbers here. And after that's done, hit enter my store. And that's it. You now have an online store created and hosted on myshopify.com. All right, our store is now created, but we don't have any content on it. So let's take care of that. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll uh, add some collections. So I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we'll uh, start defining our store content by creating some collections. And these are basically categories uh, we can use to organize our products. So let's begin. Now let's quickly uh, switch back to our um, store details I showed you previously and see what kind of categories we need. So we have categories for men, women, kids, accessories, and then two extra categories or collections, autumn for men, autumn for women. So let's go ahead and create those. To create a collection in Shopify, you would go to products and collections. Because uh, this is a brand new store, we just have one default collection that's called homepage. We can go ahead and delete this. Simply select it from here, click actions, delete selected collections. Okay, so now we can start fresh. Hit create collection and let's add the name here. Let's start with the first one on the list, men. We can give this a description, which is optional. Let's say clothing and accessories for men. We can set the collection type to either manual. And in here, we're basically gonna have to add the products to this collection by hand or automated, which will um, automatically add products to this collection based on certain conditions that we can set right here. In my case, I'm going to be setting this to manual for now. Down here, you can see a uh, search engine listing preview. This is what your, um, your collection is going to look like as a result in a search engine. As you can see the uh, category name here, the link, and also the description that we just set here. So even though this is optional, I highly recommend you add a description because it's gonna help with SEO. Now on this side, we can set the collection availability. So where is this collection available on which sale channels? Currently, we just have the online store. So it's available on the online store. And finally, we can add a collection image. Now in my product images, I have a category called miscellaneous. And here I have images that can be used throughout the, um, the store, but don't belong to a, to a product. So for example, here I have some avatars. We will be using these uh, to add the testimonials. But here I also have images for 
each category. So category men, category women, and so on. So what I'm gonna do is click and drag this right here to set the collection image. And this, depending on the theme, will be displayed in various places in, um, in your website. So once everything is done, hit save. And now we have one collection available. We don't have any products in this collection yet. We will be adding those later on. So now let's go ahead and create the rest of the collections using the same method. And I'm gonna show you one more, and then I'm just gonna fast forward. So from this menu, we can select create another collection. Let's say women, and we can say clothes and accessories for women. Collection type, I'm gonna set this to manual as well. And then for collection image, just drag and drop that to set the proper image. And when I'm done, hit save. All right, now let's add the rest of the collections. All right, so I just added the rest of the collections. So now if we go to the main page, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six collections ready to go, and we can start adding products uh, to add to these collections. As you can see, not all of them have, uh, have images, like the collection for kids and accessories don't have uh, a collection image. And that's totally fine. As I was saying, depending on the theme, you might or might not see uh, this image. So for these, I opted not to give them images. But in a real store, I recommend you, uh, you set collection images for uh, every single one you have. All right, so now that we've defined our collections, it's time to add products. We'll do that in the next lesson, so I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course in this lesson. We'll uh, take care of the most time-consuming part of creating an online store, adding products. Now, because this is a demo store, we'll only be adding a handful of them, but uh, this should give you a, a really good, ad good idea of the process behind it. So let's begin. To add products, you need to go to products here in the sidebar and click add product. Now to get started, I'm gonna open up my product images that I showed you earlier, and I'm gonna start with the very first ones, the accessories. So for each, I'm gonna open up the description, and let me actually minimize this, and I'm gonna have my two images ready to go. So then, the first one is a classic wristwatch. Let's uh, copy this uh, description. And this is actually a rich, text editor, meaning you can um, use bold text, italic, underline. You can uh, choose various uh, uh, presets for a selected piece of text. You can add headings, paragraphs, and so on, uh, lists. And you can also add tables. And we're gonna do that to represent this content right here. So I'm gonna click this, insert table, and I'm gonna click again, and I'm gonna say insert column after. So we're basically gonna create a two column layout. And then I'm simply gonna copy the values from here and I'm gonna paste them here. So the first is case thickness, eight millimeters. And with the cursor still inside a row, you can actually click this button again and you can say insert row above or below. So let's insert another, another row. And let's see how many we have, uh, how many rows? One, two, three, four, five. So let's insert three more. Okay, now let's copy the rest of the values. All right, so once we do that, we can go ahead and select uh, this piece of text and we're gonna use bold 
on them. You can also press Control or Command B to turn these into Bolt. All right, so that's our uh, description. Now, for the media, we're going to load uh, these two images. Just click and drag, or you can click the uh, the upload or the add media button, and it's gonna upload uh, the images. You can also add a media from uh, a URL, and you can also embed YouTube videos, which is pretty cool. Next, you're gonna set the price, and actually, before we do that, we need to set the proper currency that we'll be using for our store. So let's go ahead and save this product as it is. And then we'll go to settings. Let's open this in a new tab, general, and then scroll all the way down until you find store currency. And in here, just select the currency that uh, you'll be using. In my case, I'm just going to and make it easy and select US dollar or USD. So save. And now we can close this and we can come back to our product. We can do a refresh. And now you'll see that the price, uh, under price, the currency changed from uh, RON, which was the currency in, uh, in Romania, to USD. And then we can go ahead and um, next, we need to select whether or not we're going to be charging tax on this product when we ship it. And yes, we will. It's a physical product. Uh, and then under inventory, we can uh, set up the SKUs, the barcodes, basically ways to uh, keep track of how many items we have in our inventory. For this example, I'm going to be adding a SKU or stock keeping unit. This is basically an identifier that's going to let you know what this product is all about. So I'm going to say ACC, which is for accessory, and then a dash, and then WW, which is for wristwatch, and then another dash, and a C. This can be for a classic, for example. How you do your SKUs is really up to you. Uh, this is one way of doing it, but you can also use numbers. You can use lots and lots of different methods. Uh, track quantity, sure, we can check that to uh, to be able to see how many items we have left. Uh, how many items do we, do we have available right now? Let's say that we have 10 items. And then under shipping, this is a physical product, yes. Uh, how much does it weigh? Well, let's say 0 0.1 kilograms, which is 100 grams. Then under customs information, you need to set up the uh, country of origin. So let's say Romania. And then you can also specify an HS code or a harmonized system code. Uh, this is an international code that's used by border offices uh, to classify a specific product. So you can search this on Google and uh, you can find the various codes for various products and you can enter them right here. Now, does this product have multiple options, like different sizes or colors? Well, if we uh, take a look at the description here, uh, we can see that, yes, we actually do have a couple of variants. So let's go ahead and add those. Uh, we have a variant for dial, two sizes, and a variant for the strap length, two sizes here as well. So I'm going to check this box. Option one will be for dial. And here you would enter your options, 36 and 40 millimeters. So 36 millimeters, you can tab 40 millimeters, and you can tab. Let's add another option. This is for the strap length. So let's go ahead and separate those uh, options as well. 215 to 35. Oops, I forgot the millimeters. Cool. And those are our options. Now, here's the cool thing about this. When I added these variants, Shopify automatically created 
different SKUs for my product. As you can see, we have a SKU for the variant with 36 millimeter dial to 15 strap length, 36 millimeter to 35, 40 to 15, 40 to 35. So it basically created a unique identifier for every variant of this product, which is great. Now, I can go ahead and leave the SKUs as they are, or I can change them to match my own preference. In my case, I think it's much better to change the SKU to reflect the, uh, the variant properties. So in here, I can say 36-215. Here, I can say 36 to 35. Here I can say 40 to 15, and here I can say 40 to 35, All right? So now I have these cues for my variants. Now, what are these useful for? For example, uh, these are also uh, displayed sometimes on, uh, on, the, on the store as product codes. So if a customer calls you and uh, uh, asks you, hey, do you have uh, the following product in stock? Or maybe he asks the following information and he gives you the product code. Well, right away, because you're familiar with your products, you can say that, okay, so you're talking about the classic wristwatch with the 36 millimeter dial and the 250 millimeter strap length. All right, so you immediately know which product is the, the client referring to. All right, so once everything is done here, you can move on to the other side, where under organization, you can set up various product types. So here, if I don't have any product type defined, I can create one. And let's say this is a watch. So let's go ahead and add that as a product type. Uh, who's the vendor? Well, we can add urban clothing. To which collection are we adding this to? Let's add it to accessories. We can also set up tags for this product if we want. In my case, I think this is enough information so I'm gonna click save. All right, so this is how you can add a product in Shopify. Now what I'm gonna do is add the rest of the products in exactly the same way, but I'm gonna fast forward through the entire process because as I was saying in the introduction, this is uh, probably the most time consuming part of creating an online store. So I will see you after I add the rest of the products. And I've now finished adding all of the products. If we go back to the main product page, we can see all of them in this list here. And for each, we can see 
the inventory, the type, and also uh, the vendor. And we can filter uh, products by using this, uh, this form on the top. As you saw, once you have a system for adding the products, it's actually quite easy and it doesn't take a long time. But it's essential that uh, you have all of the assets, all of the images, all of the product information ready beforehand. So you can just blaze through, uh, through adding these products. All right, so with the products in, uh, the next step is to define any additional pages we might want in our online store. We'll do that in the next lesson, so I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, uh, we'll add two additional pages to our online store, a contact page and an about page. So let's begin. Adding pages is very, very simple. Once you're in the admin interface, click on online store, pages, and then add page. Let's create the about page right now, about us. Here, uh, you can add the content, and that content is gonna show up on the front end. So just to give you an idea, I'm gonna say this is the content for the about us page. Now, I specifically added this uh, demo content because once we add our theme, this will be hidden. And it's all down to what template you're using for the page. In the currently active theme, we have two templates we can choose from. We have a simple page and a page contact. Now the simple page will most likely display this content that I wrote right here. However, when we're gonna switch our theme, we're gonna have a lot more templates to choose from. And you'll see that some of those templates don't even display the content you write here. Instead, you can use a visual builder to edit your content. But more about that in a future lesson. For now, I'm gonna set the title, this content, I'm not gonna bother with the template right now and the visibility, we can set this up as visible right now. And once we're done, hit save. Next, let's uh, create another page. This will be for contact us. For content, I'm just gonna enter uh, the same demo content or a similar content as the previous page. Also visible, also the template, I'm just gonna leave it on default and click save. So now if we go back to our pages, we can see the two, let's call them additional pages that we created. Uh, because we're using uh, Shopify, the rest of the pages that you expect from, a, from an e-commerce website are already created, like the home page, a product page, collection page, cart, and so on and so forth. These are just two additional ones we needed for this project. All right, so with the pages added, we're um, pretty much good to go in terms of content, but what about presentation? Currently, uh, we're using the default theme provided by Shopify, but that doesn't really cut it for us. I, I actually didn't even show you. Let me, let me do that right now. If we go back here in the admin interface, we have this um, I, icon and when we uh, click on this it's going to show us a preview of our front end or our actual store and as you can see this is the default theme and i personally don't like this very much we're going to be using a new theme and uh, we'll do that in the next lesson so i'll see you there Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we'll be installing a brand new theme for our online clothing store. Uh, this is super simple to do, so let's get started. As I was saying in the previous lesson, the uh, default theme that's provided by Shopify is okay, but 
not really suited for what we're trying to create. So instead, uh, we're going to be installing a theme called Bixbang. Uh, you can find this theme on Envato Elements. So go ahead and download it from here. And once you do, uh, you're going to end up with um, an archive. You extract that archive and inside you'll find something like this. Now, what we need for Shopify is this bixbang.zip file. So you can go back to the uh, admin interface. You can click online store and under themes, scroll down until you find upload theme. Choose file, select the zip file and click upload. Now, if you have a slow internet connection, uh, this uh, might take a while, just like it did for me. But uh, once the upload is finished, it's gonna let you know about that. And all you gotta do is uh, wait a little bit until this, uh, this spinner stops loading. And once uh, that's done, you can click on Actions and Publish. And then hit again, Publish. And now, your new active theme is the one that we just uploaded. So if we go back to the front end, instead of this, let's do a refresh, we'll be getting the new theme, which looks something like this. Now, uh, this isn't much, but we will be uh, customizing this, this theme so it looks uh, very similar to the um, to the official uh, uh, preview that uh, that you can see here. So we'll be adding a slider of our own, some collections here, some products, and uh, we'll be changing uh, a couple of things um, as well, like the header, the footer, and so on. Now, uh, Bixbang is not necessarily a theme for a clothing store. It's a minimalist e-commerce template, but it does have uh, a demo for a clothing store. Uh, if you don't like this theme, there are a lot more you can choose from on Envato Elements. And to help you, uh, we have this... Um, a very handy article that gives you uh, 19 plus best Shopify themes for clothing and fashion. They're all on Envato Elements and um, there's also a video available and you can see a preview of each theme and a short uh, uh, description in this article. So go ahead and check out the lesson notes and um, read all about this. But for the rest of this course, I'll be using the uh, Bixbang uh, e-commerce Shopify template. All right, so now we have a brand new theme installed, but um, as you saw, it, it doesn't look uh, like much. Uh, we have to do a lot of customization to it to get it to where we want. Uh, we'll start in the next lesson with the homepage. So uh, I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we'll be customizing our homepage so that it matches our project brief. So let's begin. First, let's take a look at the project brief and uh, see what the homepage should, uh, should look like. So the homepage should feature the latest autumn collection for men and women, the regular collections for men and women, a list of products from all the categories, information about shipping support and return policy, and a newsletter sign up. Now, to customize our homepage, we can go back to the uh, admin interface, to the online store, themes, and under the currently active theme, click customize. And this is actually very cool. In Shopify, when you're customizing a theme, you get this live preview in uh, in the biggest portion of the page and you can actually scale this live preview to see how it's going to look like on uh, on various uh, devices and on the left 
you have a sidebar that you can use to tweak the various settings and also create sections. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to theme settings and under settings, I'm going to uncheck quick view and compare buttons. And we can also uncheck a wish list because we're not uh, going to be using it here. Once you do that, save. Now let's go back. I'm actually not going to touch the typography because I think it looks pretty good. But if you want to, you can change the typefaces from here and also the various font sizes. Again, if you want to change the main colors, you can do that from here, the header colors as well. Uh, let's go to page title and in the breadcrumbs, I'm just going to say home and save. And then I'll go to header and I'm going to select the header design to be default. And that's going to change it from that sidebar header that you saw to this header that's displayed on the top. Let's go back. Under product item, I'm going to select use one image height because I don't want uh, the products to be resized because I have different height images. And then finally, I'll go to pop up newsletter and I want to deactivate this pop up right here. You can re enable it for your own shop if you want, but in my case, I want to disable it. So I can just uncheck that and uh, the pop up will now be uh, be gone. It's not going to show up every time we're uh, we're loading our store. Okay, so now that we have the home page selected, let's go in and work a little bit closer with the individual sections in this page. The first thing I'm going to do is actually click on each one of these and remove it because I want to start with a clean slate. And actually, uh, let me quickly go to footer template and enable show footer. And that's going to show the footer right here. And if we scroll down a little bit until we find uh, design footer, I'm going to select footer column. Yeah, this is the uh, the template that I want to use. And here we can actually edit the information inside the footer. I'm going to simply do some uh, some quick changes here. I'm going to say 2020 urban clothing, and I'm also going to change this uh, this address. Let's see where it is. Footer links payment. It's uh, it's right here. So if you remember, uh, we do have a an address right here. So let's copy that and let's paste it in. Let's actually use paragraphs here as well. And let's click Save. So now the first thing we'll do is change the logo and the navigation. So for that, we'll open up the header, the logo text. We're going to set this to urban clothing, uh, logo main. Let's go ahead and upload the logo. Right, so we're going to select that. This is just a PNG file. So select it. Uh, sticky logo, let's actually upload the exact same one. Sticky logo is used on the sticky header. If you enable that page, that uh, option, uh, logo page is the logo that's being displayed on the additional pages. So let's go ahead and select the same one. Here under design header, I'm just gonna uh, leave it um, at default, just like this. Uh, these are the options for the uh, header sidebar. So we're not really interested in that. Uh, this is where you can set a custom logo for mobile. Let's uh, actually go ahead and select the same one. Obviously, you can uh, make this smaller for mobile. Uh, then under information bar, 
uh, you can actually display an information bar it's gonna look just like that i don't uh, need it uh, what i do want to change is this uh, top bar and i want to show a menu there i'm going to select the footer menu and we'll uh, we'll actually edit this in just a little bit multiple currency corresponds to this uh, drop down and mega menu is something that you can add to the main menu in my case i don't really need it so i'm not gonna tamper with it all right so with that let's go ahead and save and let's actually go back let's go back to the main interface and change the uh, the menus so we'll go to navigation and here you can see two menus let's click on main menu for instance and I'm going to change this to reflect my main categories. So I'm going to say add menu item. I'm going to say men. And we can search collections and select the one that we want to link to. Then maybe for women, you can actually search like this. And maybe one more for kids. So let's go ahead and add that save menu and let's go back to our navigation and change this footer menu this i just want to display two items i want to display the about us page and the contact page and save and once we do that, you'll see that if we go to the front end, our navigation is now updated in the main menu and also in this, as I called it, a footer menu. But you can call this whatever you want. And these will link to the corresponding pages. All right, so the footer is complete, the header is complete. Now let's see about the content. For that, we'll go. Uh, back to our um, theme customizer and we'll add a section we'll select a slider uh, let's see revolution fashion and let's go ahead and add that and here we can define our slides so click on each slide let's select a background image let's upload one and here we can edit the heading let's say this the subtitle is going to say new 2020 season uh, this text we can leave it like this uh, text background we can just say 2020 and also let's uh, link this to the autumn for men uh, collection let's change the uh, background before color to something like this and change the uh, text background to something like this and we're done with this one you can't uh, see it yet in the preview but uh, let's go ahead and save so uh, it's going to show up here in uh, just a second and there it is that's pretty cool right and now the second slide currently has no image attached to it so let's uh let's uh change that shall we so slide number two select the image we're gonna select the this one and here we're just gonna change the heading subtitle and colors to match this new slide all right and that's it these are our two slides so let's save that and see them in action that's slide number one and that's slide number two how easy was that next up let's add some items here for our main categories for this we're going to add a section which is called constructive banners 
I'm going to uncheck full uh, width. The rest is going to be left at default, but um, I am using two banners and not four, so I'm going to click each one, or actually two of them, just remove and remove. Okay, the first one, let's select an image. Let's upload uh, the image for the uh, category for uh, women's clothing. Let's link this actually to the uh, women's category. As for text, for small text, I'm just going to say collection. The big text is going to say women. And you can actually see a preview here. And the only thing I'm going to change here is the base one text color. I'm going to use this uh, dark one. And the active text color one, I'm going to change it to white. So it looks something like this. And that's it. Let's, uh, let's do the uh, second banner. Right, this is going to be for the uh, men's collection. Very similar here. The link is going to take us to the collection men. The text is going to say collection men. And by the way, you can do HTML here if you want to set up a custom uh, markup. And here I'm just going to change again the base text colors, and the active color. And this is all the customization I'm going to do to these elements. Let's hit save. Next up, we need to add a list of uh, products from all categories. So for that, we'll go back here, add section. And all the way down, under products, we'll select tabs horizontal. And you can see how that looks like here. So let's click Add. Here you can actually set up different effects for different sections. So for example, this one I can uh, select. OK, let's fade up when we scroll down to it, which is pretty cool. Here we can define how many products we want in a row. We can show a title. Let's call this Products. And here we can choose what collections we want to display. So under tab gallery, we can say men's collection. And I can select it from here. And then for each one, I can choose like how many products I want to show, how many products in a row, how many slides to, uh, to scroll and so on and so forth. And also, if we have multiple slides, we can change uh, when the slides will rotate. Every seven seconds is by default, but you can change this, obviously. Uh, let's do another one. This will be for women. And we can actually just write it like this. And as you can see, this automatically gets the, uh, the collection image we set earlier. Let's also change this. And the third one, let's add the kids collection. And we can select it from here, just like we did previously. And we can add another one, maybe for accessories. So let's add the tab gallery, accessories, and we'll select accessories from here. All right, so once that's all said and done, let's hit save. And let's do a preview on the front end to see how our home page is coming together. So here it is. That's the, um, the sticky nav that you see there. So that's the slider, the two collections, and then the products. And here you can finally see how uh, the products that we added look like. So these are products for men women, kids, and the accessories that we added. Pretty cool. So now let's quickly uh, go ahead and finalize this uh, homepage. Let's see, we added these, these, and these. 
Next, we need information about shipping support and return policy and a newsletter sign up. So let's quickly go ahead and add those. Let's add a section. We're going to call this, um, or we'll actually select one that's called icon banners. And this actually uh, has all the information we need. The only change that I'm going to make here is I'm going to remove the, uh, the border. So under border color, I'm going to select none. And that's going to get rid of this, uh, this border. And finally, for the uh, newsletter, we're going to scroll down and we actually have a, a section here called newsletter that looks something like this. And all I'm going to change here is the title. And I'm going to call this Urban Newsletter. You have various styles here for the title. You can change the description. But in my case, this works just fine. So I'm going to save. And right now, our home page is complete. It looks something like this. And you saw just how easy it was going from uh, that uh, standard homepage to this one. It's super, super simple. All right, the homepage is now complete. And um, this was actually the most time consuming because we had to create all of those uh, elements uh, from scratch. And we also set up um, certain options that will uh, translate to the other pages. Now, uh, speaking of the other pages, it's going to be much easier on those. And in the next lesson, we're going to be um, customizing the collection and product pages. So uh, I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this lesson, we'll be customizing the collection and product pages. Uh, this is quite an easy task, so uh, let's get started. Now, to keep this short, I went ahead and customized the uh, collection and product pages. And I'm just going to walk you through the changes uh, that I made. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, I just like to mention that uh, uh, during the recording process of this course, uh, Shopify actually updated their, uh, their back end. So it looks a little bit different than uh, what you're going to see in the other videos or in the videos thus far. And they actually made some uh, some pretty cool changes. The interface seems more uh, responsive. It's a, a little bit faster with the animations, transitions, and everything. And overall, I think this is a, this is a great change. So now, uh, back to the topic of this lesson: the collection and product pages. Let's go ahead and open up, for example, the uh, collection for the uh, men's clothing. And the only change that I made here was to remove the filters and change the title of this uh, newsletter widget. Uh, to do this, I just open up the newsletter and here you can actually see a, a very cool feature of the new interface. When you click on one of these widgets, uh, the page will automatically scroll down there, which is uh, really cool. So to change the title, I just opened up this uh, this widget and I changed the heading. And for the uh, filters, I opened up theme settings, I went to collection page, and I went to every single filter group. And I simply unchecked show filter group, as you can see, there are a couple of uh, filters here, I just went ahead and unchecked show filter group on all of them. And now it's just this drop down. So that covers it for the collection page. Now, if we're going to open up a um, product, we'll uh, be able to see the product page. And the changes that I made here, let me actually scroll back up. Uh, I removed the product type and vendor information from here. And to do that, you would go to product pages, and you will scroll all the way down until you find this product information. And I simply unchecked show product vendor, show product type. And then uh, I also removed an extra tab that says additional information. This was present right here under content. And I simply opened that and removed the content. And that's it. So now 
this is what a um, product page looks like. And I specifically opened this one so you can see how it looks like with all, uh, all the bells and whistles, like all the variants. Uh, as you can see here, some of the colors are actually replaced by uh, a sort of uh, check boxes. Others are simply uh, buttons. The sizes are buttons as well. And you can see how discounted price looks like. But yeah, that's uh, those are the only changes that I made to these pages. All right, we're almost finished uh, customizing our online store. Uh, the only thing left to do is to uh, take care of the about and contact pages. And we'll do that in the next lesson. So I'll see you there. Welcome back to the course. In this final lesson, we'll customize the About Us and Contact Us pages. And by doing that, we'll uh, complete our online store. So let's begin. Now, just like in the previous lesson, I went ahead and made all the necessary changes to the About and Contact Us pages. And I'm just going to walk you through what I did so maybe you can get some inspiration for your own project. So starting with the About Us page, if you remember uh, from a previous lesson, it was just a blank page with uh, just the header, a footer, and uh, the content that we entered there. But because uh, I chose a template, and I'll show you that in just a little bit, our, con our uh, About page sorry, uh, looks something like this. And we have some testimonials added here. And also the uh, the footer and the uh, the newsletter is exactly the same. So jumping back into the back end under the theme customizer, if we open up about us, you'll see that in terms of content, we're starting with a section banner, which is this one here, basically, where we added a background image. We changed the text here to match the one that we had in the um, in the project briefing, the description, and we also changed uh, the uh, the address here. I also added uh, these extra images. Now, in terms of the uh, testimonials, uh, we have this testimonials page widget, and each testimonial is a review block here, and you can add these as many of these as you want, you simply add an image here. And you add the description and the author right here. It's really that simple. And if we go back to uh, to the back end here, and we go to pages, you'll see that about us is using page dot about, we actually have a different template here that we could use. But I chose to go with page dot about and I actually did the same with contact us. I chose contact three as a template. So by doing that, our contact page looks something like this. It's very simple, just uh, contact information here, contact form, a map. And the rest is uh, exactly the same. Uh, as in the other pages. So now if we uh, go back to our online store, and let me actually show you the content inside the uh, the customizer, we basically have this structure. Now, if you're going to use the same templates, as I did, you're going to notice that yours might be a little bit different, you're going to have some additional sections in here. And that's because I actually changed uh, the code for some of these templates. You see a template comes with predefined blocks, or widgets, and you cannot uh, delete them from here. Instead, what you need to do is go to theme actions, edit code, and then you would need to find the template that you need to uh, to edit in our case, it's contact three, and whatever section you don't want, you can simply delete it from here, and hit save. And that's going to remove that section completely from uh, from the template. And with that, our online store is now complete. 
at least from a design and product point of view, which is what we covered in this course. Um, of course, before going live, you do need to go through the settings and uh, you know set up the payments and the shipping details and all that good stuff. But that's beyond the point of, uh, of this course. Now, hopefully this experience gave you a good idea of what it's like to build an online store with uh, Shopify. And as you saw, we were able to do this in under one hour because we had all of the assets ready to go, the images uh, or the product images, the product description, the product information, all that good stuff. We had it uh, ready to go and we just had to copy and paste in, uh, in the Shopify uh, admin. So even when you're building a real store with lots and lots of products, if you're gonna organize yourself like this, it's gonna be much, much easier. Uh, with that said, thank you very much for watching this course. I'm Adi Cordilla, and until next time, take care.